waiting for it for three years, and we think we're on our way. What's the Improvement Association's reaction to the report? Do you think it's a good report? Well, we think it's an excellent report. We're very gratified with it. We expected it to show uh, this because our previous studies had shown it. And uh, we think uh, it's a fine report, and we only regret that we had to take three years to get the report, which we had hoped to get in six months. Well, as you can see from this map, we're, of course, down in here, the downtown area. Now, the, this uh, route that it will take is basically the uh, border lines of our Dallas County, and it comes all the way around, as you can see uh, in this uh, map here. What do you think are the basic advantages of the loop? Well, I think the basic advantage is somewhat similar to Loop 12, as to relieve the traffic congestion. And, of course, if our growth continues as it has in the past, we're going to have the same problems that we had before we had Loop 12. Mr. Berry, how do you think this is going to benefit travelers? Well, of course, there's no question that it'll be a big benefit to travelers, and we already have some 96 million uh, registered uh, drivers, so I guess we have almost that many cars, and it's not going to get any less. And of all of this area in North Dallas and even South Dallas is beginning to pick up, and all of the towns around this entire parameter will begin to grow and expand as this area grows, and I think this is a case where Travelers would be just stymied. It's going to be like the downtown business district's getting to be now uh, if we don't do something. And this will make it easier for them to circumvent, circumvent Dallas. Circumvent Dallas, right. But it won't hurt some of our surrounding communities. Oh, I would think it would be helpful to them. Guards uh, to the convention platform, what do you think will be the strongest issue? Down there? Oh, by far it's going to be law and order. Because for, for the Republicans today, Law and order is the key issue, and it, it, I use the word today because we keep talking, you know, in terms of this is a passing thing, but, you know, the commission's report the other day where they analyzed the rights, and they said it's just one or two percent, you know, you'd always heard that. It turned out 18 percent of the people in these areas have been involved in rights, and uh, over 50 percent believe that uh, the rights were a good thing in these areas that have had the rights, so it's a serious issue, and uh, we need to convince everyone, and particularly the people that are involved, that, that, that we really mean business about we're going to have law and order right now. This is going to depend, of course, upon 
who the presidential nominee is. Uh, if it were Nixon, I've heard this surprising. It's just amazing yesterday how much y y you got back in the strength that Reagan has developed down there. Uh, they said from every group that if Nixon were the presidential nominee and they left it open to the floor, that everyone down there would go for Reagan. Reagan would do well in our community. The people of this community would, uh, would find Reagan a, a strong vice presidential nominee. Well, the canal will be bigger than they had first planned simply because the Corps uh, found out that it would carry more commerce than the, than the previous study had showed. The uh, locks uh, will be bigger, and furthermore, they will make provision for parallel locks uh, to meet future expansion. Uh, that's the main difference, I would say. The new report now, will that move progress farther faster or will it tend to slow down progress on the canal? Well, of course, uh, uh, I like to put it this way. We feel like we've just rounded third base and are headed for home. Uh, I'd like to emphasize, though, that we have a big job to do, that there's a great deal of work yet to be done. What offensive plans do you do you have in mind as far as the quarterbacking situation is concerned? Well, the thing we're going to try to do, uh, Vern, is that we're going to naturally start Don Meredith, and I'm going to uh, hope that he'll work the first half entirely, and then I'm going to come in with Craig Martin in the third quarter and let him work with the first unit some, and then from then on, our plans will be dictated primarily by the game itself, how it's going. How about the kicking situation? Who do you plan to utilize in this first exhibition? Uh, we're going to start uh, punting with Ron Whidbey, who has looked very good in practice, and we're starting our field goal and kickoff with Al McFarland. Uh, my plans right now is to have them kick the whole game without bringing in any of our other kickers. Uh, we feel right now that we have four kickers who can kick in the NFL, uh, actually two punters and two place kickers. So this is the best group of kickers I think we've ever had in camp.